I see people, people coming in. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody's coming in here. You guys, here we go. All right. How you doing, Pop? <laughs> Houston, we Houston, we have a problem. Oh my gosh, Vince, I don't. First off, Vince, uh, thank you for trying to join. Second off, I apologize for all the glitches. I don't know how or what happened, but I'm the, I'm the new guy on you Facebook. I probably got something set wrong there. It's my oh, fault. You, okay, you screwed it up. Then it's your fault. Yeah, just blame it on me. Blame it on the new guy. Blame it on the new guy. <laughs> Thanks for doing this on Saturday. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Sorsha, look at you and all your radiant glory. It's great That's to see right. you. That's right. She's <laughs> stepping in style there. Oh, my. Oh, Sorsha's always in style, Vince. That's right. Uh, doing this. Yeah. Thanks for setting this up. I know uh, I know we're going to have folks over here. I think Justin Michael's going to join us today. Great. We got Anna. We got Sorsha. We got Christine, Mary, Debbie, Wendy, Kathy. People we hit, we got 10 already. How's it? All right, we got everybody here coming in here. All right, okay. All right, now that now that we got a connection, I gotta be I'll be right back in two minutes. Now we got a connection. <laughs> Don't go away. Oh God, <laughs> run off, run off. leave it to me. Leave it to me. <laughs> I hear we I, I hear we're gonna have a guest speaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's gonna be a guest speaker. It's it's gonna be Mike, I guess. I don't know. Okay. All right. Like Penny. Uh, okay. All right. I'll be right back. You guys hang in there. Okay. Great. <laughs> hey, now, everybody knows now that uh, now that we're here and we're live, we're gonna have to do some more blending exercises with Source's water glass there or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, first of all, that was perfect last time. The, the water glass, the whole thing. Uh, folks, I've talked to Vince on a couple of occasions since we did that. And um, uh, he and I both agree, and I think everybody else in the group does too. That was an amazing exercise. Whether it be the, the a silly little ink pen, uh, the rubber band, the water glass, the source to come up with. I think that we all did that and did that very, very well. So... That was that was amazing, and I hope that everybody continues to participate in that. And um, well, Vince, Vince and I are working on a couple of surprises for the group too. So uh, if he wants if he wants to go into that, then I'll let him talk about that later. But uh, there's more good stuff to come on the uh, conceptual blending front. I was telling him yesterday when we were trying to get the all the finalists for today which clearly didn't work as well as we thought it would but um i was telling about the uh the lady that come in and posted her grocery shopping as a conceptual yeah. blending <laughs> exercise and you know what um he well first he laughed and then he thought oh my god that's amazing that's mm. amazing. so i gotta tell you what dad is happy with what us kids are doing it's just that mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're doing great, and it's great to see people embrace the concept of conceptual blending the way that we are in the group. So, um, again, I mean, we all owe a big thanks to Sorsha because she's the one that started the group, and then she just allowed me and Rick and Pat and everybody else to jump in there and do our thing. But Sorsha started the group. It was her brainchild. And now here we are. So Sorsha, you deserve some credit for that. I hope somebody sees think, that because you deserve I, the credit for that. Oh, bless you. I didn't uh, let you in. I think I begged you. I begged you to join. <laughs> <laughs> there was only me in the group. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never, ever, ever had to beg me to be a part of this this group not at all not at all it's been uh, it's been amazing it's it's been amazing and the uh, the reception that we get from from the other members i just think that that is uh, that tells me right there that 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 we you me rick pat draven we're, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing with this group and uh, we've got an amazing group and, uh, and that's we've to got the credit. Some great members haven't we yeah, we got some really great members. We do, we do. Yeah. That's to the credit of everybody, Mary and yeah. Mary, and and I mean everybody. Yeah. 
Who, who um, was that you, Anna, who did the shopping list? Was that, was that you? There was, who was it who did no. the, did the, did the shopping? If you're, talk, if you're talking to me, no, no. Yeah. No, it, no, it was Anna. not me. I just joined today. Well, right. we're happy to have you. you. We're happy, happy to have you. Welcome. Welcome Thank to you. Lending. <laughs> Thank you so much. But, I, but you gave some, uh, some answers on something that I posted, didn't you? Yeah, I don't think so. Sorry, I'm no, sorry. No, I, I asked, I, I posted today asking for numerology and uh, the systems oh, yeah. that uh, that you oh, use. Yes, yes. Anna, okay, good yes, question. Yeah, when Vince oh, yeah. The camera, folks, I promise I'm gonna shut up. I promise I'm not co hosting anymore. Vince is here, we've got <laughs> we've got dad in the group. So, Anna, when Vince gets back, present. <laughs> question to him i really i would really love to get his take on that that was an amazing question and thank you for it and thanks to okay. everybody that now, mike, what, what you're, really, what really you're supposed question. to say now mike is back to you vince yeah back to you vince. <laughs> 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 say hello to vince and vince. But, I, but i didn't hear the question i wasn't <laughs> here so what's this amazing question you gotta say it all over again because i wasn't here and I, okay, so yes, okay. so uh, I just joined the group today, oh, and um, yeah, <laughs> and uh, because I, I just started like three months ago, so okay. I'm very very new at this, and uh, I was asking about what system uh, do you use? Do people use uh, be, uh, for um, numerology? Because I'm very lost. Uh, I don't know I, uh, about it, and I want to research more. Uh, because I know there's keywords and stuff, but I don't want to 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 be just on keywords. I I want to 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 to, to dive deeper. But I I just wanted to know where to start. I mean, where where do the numerology uh, these keywords from numerology come? I think you're you're going to find all sorts of sources with that. That's that's kind of. That's kind of deep because you, you can find all sorts of different approaches to numerology. And I would just say my, my advice anyway, would be to just start out basic, simple, get a base, get a book on numerology, basic numerology, and take it from there and see which, what directions you want to go with it. Um, and see how they tie into tarot if you want to use the tarot with it. But if you don't, you don't have to, you know. No, I, I, I want could. to connect it with tarot. I okay. want to connect it with tarot, obviously. But I know there's the Pythagoras system, the Calde the Calde Cal Caldean system, and there's some, some a lot of them, like three, four. But yeah, you, I, I would say there's no one one is specific that's better than the other. Um, Pythagoras is old stuff, but uh, it's classic stuff too, and and. Uh, so I, I, I would say that they all, I would say just use what you think, a little of this one, a little of that one, and see which ones you, as long as you can assign meaning to those numbers in some way that relates to the tarot, as far as I'm concerned, you're using numerology. Because, like, sorry, uh, when you, like, when you, when you, uh, when you find your own keywords uh, to the numbers, uh, where did you get those keywords from? Me? I got those by blending all sorts of different books on the tarot and the meanings of those cards and try to find ways that would be agreeable with each book. Uh, a word that would be agreeable with this book for, the, for that particular card and this book agreeable with that book or all these different books and say, okay, this card basically means this according to this group of books that I got here. And okay. I did that with each card. And that's why I okay. combined the suits. I didn't I didn't use the suits. I, so in other words, the four of swords, four of cups, four of wands, four of pentacles, they're all fours to me. They're all fours, yes, right. yes, yes. And, that's, and I was able to do that, uh, combining, getting a key word that would be agreeable with all sorts of different sources on the tarot in a, for a numerological value of the, of the fours. Or the fives, or whatever the number happens to be, and that's what I yeah. do. I just I just grabbed a bunch of information that I could find, and blended it all together. Okay. And it worked. It worked good, I think. Okay. Vince, 
Vincent, that's that's a great answer. I, I love what you're saying there. I'm just curious now, uh, and, and it might even help uh, Anna a little more, uh, if you could maybe share with us, the group, uh, even me, because I don't think I've ever actually even asked you this question, but coming into the tarot and your growth and, and moving through the tarot as as a uh, as a published author, as, as a deck creator, um, as a uh, well-known, I would say, world-renowned reader, um, all of these things that you've accomplished, I'm just curious now, uh, and knowing what you just said, um, what were your big influences? What what was was it uh, was it Kaplan? What was it Mary Greer? Uh, I'm I'm just kind of curious what your big influences were there. Uh, could could it have even been uh, 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 um, writer Wait Arthur Edward Wait any of those? I mean you know where were your influences when you were coming into your own and growing in the world of tarot? I'd have to say that that my influences were all over the road. I was I, I I read um a little of this a little of that this author that author I never had really one specific author that I think was my main goal uh, for a while in the eighties for a while in the eighty Mary Greer was who I was using for for the late eighties just before I started doing classes when I started reading pro in ninety three. So maybe yeah. it was 1990, even. I was reading a lot of Mary Greer. She had Tarot for Yourself, Tarot Constellations, and Tarot Mirrors, I think. Those three books. And I, I really liked those books. And I referred those books to all my students that I was teaching. But um, I never really, I've read all sorts of different, I, I never liked uh, uh, um, Rider Wait, uh, Arthur Waite. Um, I read Tarot of the Bohemians, Pappas, Dr. Ancoze. That was um, like really reading War and Peace. <laughs> you know, it was really just <laughs> old stuff. And it was not, and there was nothing in there on how to read the cards, really. It's more the mystical approach to things. Yeah. So th I read a lot of stuff that really didn't do me any good. Um, but I just, if I saw a book on the Tarot, I'd get it. I've read some books that I don't even know. They're, they're not even around anymore. <laughs> you know, and they're just, but they I were have, good books. They were good books. Yeah, I have but, some of those too. In fact, I've got uh, uh, Papa's, uh, it, the, the name of the book is uh, Mystical Tarot or something like that. And, and it's a, it's a, it's a, a, like a conglomeration of like five or six or seven different books. I think it's like, gosh, it's like 900 pages thick. I mean, it's, it's crazy big. You could, you could hurt somebody with this stinking book. You could use it for body armor, but it's got a lot of the old classics in it, like um, uh, Tarot of the Bohemians and these types of things. Manly, I, I Manly Hall. That. Manly Hall, Elvis Levi. Yes, yes, Levi. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I want. I wanted that primarily for the historical context of where we were. But I mean, ultimately, in the end, most of those books have nothing to do with where we are today. No, they don't. No, I know. I wanted and, that. You know, if somebody could do that. I, I would uh, I would be shuffling uh, and I do I point people to bare bones all the time because that's a more a much more contemporary or they could even go to like Mary Greer which is uh, yeah. uh, I don't yeah. think I have any of her books but I've seen uh, some interviews with Mary and yeah. whatnot and she's certainly a contemporary that deserves much respect and yeah. it's, it's nice to hear that um, even for even for you that that you were looking to marry for uh, information oh, yeah. uh, and insight back in the day and and wasn't she the one that did the aquarian tarot was that her deck no mary greer i don't think no no uh -uh. she aquarian? didn't have anything I got but one. mary greer did this one too this is this is one on um understanding tarot court yeah and that's dated 2004. So she's still publishing, apparently. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mary's still working. There is a Greer. There is a Greer deck, but that's not by Mary Kay Greer. Oh, okay. That's probably what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I got it here. Here it is. Morgan Greer. The, Morgan, Morgan Greer, yeah. Morgan Greer. Yeah. Morgan Greer. Oh. 
Yeah. See, people, I'm not so smart either. I make mistakes. But I tell you what, <laughs> I, I, I've, um, um, I think what you end up doing is you end up reading so much and then you find your own way. You just gradually, you just start doing it your own way because you start, to, you start to see, I read a little of this guy, I read a little of this guy over here, and this one over here. And wait a minute, they're all saying different stuff. Yeah. Then you start to see it's okay to, to you got leeway with how it's done. If yeah. you're learning how to do, how to land a 747 in an airport, there's only one way you're going to land that plane, the right way. Yeah, the right way. <laughs> but when you're reading tarot cards, you're you, you have a lot of room to move. And and uh, and you and you and you do. You just find. I was, Rachel yeah, Pollock oh. was another big name. Rachel Pollock and Mary Greer both were. Yeah, Pollock. Was, Rachel is, is excellent, absolutely. But I've read I've, people like um. I've, 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 I've even read a little bit out of this little book with the original one, JJ, and, and picked up little, little bits and pieces. I was showing this earlier when we were talking about the numerology <laughs> aspect of the whole thing. And um, it, um, I, it hit home with everybody and I answered the question, I hope pretty well. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's something to be learned, I think, from everybody. And I think the big point is, you know, start. And not, not only do you start, but you, you lay that groundwork with the keywords and then like it, with uh, you're talking about the fours with stability and then you can add in that extra layer when you get good and ready you can learn to work with the suits again like uh, um, you know your mind your thinking of uh, swords uh, you know your emotions and matters of the heart with the cuffs etc cetera, etc cetera. and um, and go through and add that other add that layer and then add another layer and another layer and before you know it, you're, you're reading professionally and doing as good as any other reader out there. But you start, I think, in my humble opinion, with keywords and then allow it to grow from there. Well, things change, you know, things are changing all the time. I remember, um, yeah, but there's um, Fred Gettings was the name of it. He did books. Mm. I don't have his book here. I got it at the apartment. But um, he was like in the 70s, I think. And uh I remember he was saying that you just read the 22 majors. Back then, yep. a lot of people just read the 22 majors. Yes. That's all they read. And, but, you know, so you would never, you wouldn't use his advice today. Not too many people would anyway. Most people are going to use the whole deck. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. What do you think about a majors only read? Remember, we were talking about that yesterday. We were going to bring that up. Well, here's, here's the thing with that. When I started reading... A lot of readers just used the majors. Those were the serious cards. Yeah. Uh, but, but a lot of readers used the whole deck, too. Hold on a second. Let me use her. Okay. So, so you have... So now you have some people just using the 22 cards, majors, and others using the whole deck. After a while, everybody's using the whole deck. I don't know anybody that just uses 22 majors anymore. And I think the reason for that is because if you read in pro and you're sitting with a bunch of other readers and you got 22 cards in front of you, that's what you got. And mm -hmm. sitting on your table and the guy next to you has a full deck. Who are you going to go to for the reading? You got to go. Oh, that guy's got more cards. I want to go to him. Yeah. So I think that's why most readers started reading the whole deck, is because it looked better than the person. If you're just reading the 22 majors, somebody sitting next to you is reading a whole deck. You're not going to get the readings. They're going to get the readings. That's one of the things. That's one of the things I think it was. So a matter of presentation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. And it ain't yeah. going to hurt. So might as well use it. Well, and, no. And I, I, I tell you, if people just like to see more, I think they're going to go to that person with the more. This person yeah. not got more cards to, to look at. I'm going to go to them. And uh, so I, I think that's probably why it became where success, busy readers were using the whole deck. And, and, uh, and, I, and I tell you what, I, I worked with a guy, George, a great guy, worked with him for years, like 10 years. 15 maybe 
and he used um he did triple deck readings so you, you you know you have people walking into to a crowd of readers there you have about eight readers sitting around and he's got three decks of tarot cards in front of him with a sign that says triple deck readings and then the person next to him maybe me with one deck in front of me saying tarot readings you got to go to the triple deck reading guy same price this guy's got three decks this guy's only got one I think it was the same type of principle with just using the 22 majors in a reading or using the whole deck. You know, and you know, George always did good. He did good. He used his three decks of cards. Okay. You know. Man, that's a whole lot of towers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But I, it was just a, I think it was more of a gimmick on his part. Yeah. You know, but it worked. You know, I mean, he was a successful reader. Yeah. Absolutely. Did he? Did he use all three decks in one go, or did he lay out one no. deck first and then a second and then a third? If I remember right, I don't really watch him. I, I, he probably showed me 20 years ago. I never cared. <laughs> <laughs> so, so more than likely, he read three different separate decks, three, okay. three different readings. More than I don't think he put them all together on a table at once. Okay. If I remember right. And he's still reading, so I don't know. I could. Uh, I haven't seen him in a while, but but uh, well, get him in a Zoom. Let's get let's quiz him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, let's get George, him in here, George. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, no, but but um, so you're going to do all sorts of different things with him, you know, and and but I think that that's um really why people stop using the 22 majors only. Mm. It didn't look good on your table. Compared to the reader who's got 78 cards sitting next to him. Yeah. You got to go to the person with more cards on the table, more to look at. And, well, I think uh, in history, when, when the tarot was in the process of becoming, and I'm talking late 1700s, uh, eight, eight, 1800s on forward, uh, I think that the, uh, uh, the majors, the trumps were looked at as, like you said, the serious cards, you know, the cards that the, the readers are using and the minors were looked at uh, uh, nothing more than uh, good for a card game, you know, and then yeah. you were playing like the Italian Tarachi or uh, these various types of games. And, uh, you know, that's what, that's what they were doing back then. And I think that uh, we've come a long way since those days, but I do yeah. know too, uh, in speaking to some folks that are actually uh, in France and reading professionally. Now, I know one French reader that um, he does a lot of readings with uh, just the majors because that's still the traditional way to do it. So your hardcore traditionalists are still going to do that. But uh, overall, I think we've moved forward from that a little bit. And now we incorporate the whole deck. And I think you're right. It does add more layers with the minors in it. Well, I forgot what the guy's name was, uh, but he, um, one of the first readers in the 1700s, um, France, mm. Petit, Petit, Jason, Petit. Justin probably knows who I'm talking about. Oh, Justin's in here. I know darn good and well. He'd know who he was. Yeah. Um, that guy. Anyway, <laughs> he, he used the whole deck and he had a spread where every card was laid out on the table. Oh yeah. Gosh, I've I've heard of that. Yeah, the, the all 78. Yeah. Yeah, I've right. That. And that's the 1700s. And he was yeah. probably one of the first professional high society type of uh reader out there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was I guess you could there was always different ways you can do it. Sure. Even if it's Levi probably just used the 22 majors. Yeah, because he studied the the Kabbalah, the twenty two mm -hmm. paths, with the twenty two cards. Yeah, and you know there's still a lot of readers today that use the uh, Kabbalistic uh, uh, viewpoint uh, and methods to read uh, to read tarot. That's yeah. uh, that's still very very popular. I think it's most popular using Kabbalah with uh, the uh, 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 shoot the Toth deck. 
Okay. A lot of people like applying the uh, Kabbalah to the Toth deck, and it seems to lend itself to that. Uh, again, I'm 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 one of these uh, heretics that uh, still just apply the Patishi method to the Kabbalah to the uh, Toth deck too. And you know what? I can get just as good a reading out of a Toth deck as I can any other. Yeah, I right. It, sure. The pictures yeah. change, but it's still just a random stimulus. And yeah. I can, yeah, I can do the same kind of readings. And, and uh, I know I mentioned to you the other day that I've started working with the uh, machete. Yeah. The machete deck with all the extra cards and whatnot in it. Uh, and uh, I mean, these cards are beautiful, but they got all the extras in it. But that just adds another layer to it. With the machete, you get your, you, what do you got? You got your four, uh, uh, your cardinal virtues. You, you get your uh, elements, four elements. And then you get your uh, astrological signs, Leo. Yeah, the deadly, seven yeah. deadly sins in there? No, seven deadly <laughs> sins. Like, yeah, buying two darn mini tarot decks. <laughs> well, no, they I, I, they might have had them in there. No, yeah. uh, it could have very well been in there. But but yeah, I mean, instead of uh, instead of seventy eight cards, I think uh, the uh, Bajetti is. Um, I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. But this About deck hundred cards. Like, no, it's ninety seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not, quite, it's not quite a hundred. It's like 97, but yeah, there's a bunch of, bunch of extra cards in here and it's yeah. all uh, considered the uh, major arcana. Now I can't get the man. I can't get the boxes apart. Now these boxes are tight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, but yeah, this is the deck that you can get, believe it or not, you can go to Spencer's. Spencer's gifts in any mall that's got a Spencer's, that deck's in there. I give twenty dollars for that deck. Oh, okay, all right. Twenty bucks for the stinking deck, and and it's been fun. But I mean, look at that thing. That's a monster. Yeah, it's a lot of cards. But yeah, it's like ninety-seven, ninety-eight cards. It's almost a hundred. You're right. I, it's you know, a beautiful it's, deck, it's, as well. It's, it's, oh, wait, it is. Look at this. Now this is the fool, but look at that cotton picking thing. Isn't that Aww. beautiful? It's called oh, yeah. the Man in the Machete deck, and uh, beautiful, beautiful cards. Yeah. And it just on and on and on. There's the magician. Oh yeah, mm. the artwork. Yeah, gorgeous. Yes, they are. The artwork is gorgeous. I tell you what, I don't think I've ever bought an inexpensive deck for twenty bucks any any better looking than this one right here. I look forward to actually getting uh, uh getting a little more accustomed to working with this and the artwork and the various cues and i'm going to start uh doing uh past life readings with this uh oh, cool yeah past life yeah marilyn marilyn from tarot clarity she's on uh, she's on youtube she's a part of our group vince i know i we talked about marilyn a little bit yeah. she's an amazing amazing lady she's been reading probably pretty close to as long as you have Vince. I know she's read 30, probably closer to 40 years. So she's been okay. around a while. and uh, she uses the machete deck for uh, past life reads. Uh, nice. She did a demonstration on it. And That's I mean, nice. you know, nobody can say she's wrong. No, no. Up with, and I, I really liked, I really loved her process and I've started kind of, hammering it out and like i was teasing with you yesterday once i'm done figuring out Marilyn's uh system of reading a little bit with the machete deck go all petiti on it and put my own little special nuances in there so That's again cool. there's no wrong way to do it people no uh, I've, I've i've done some I, I i i'm not i don't advertise any past life readings but i have done some but i've told people i don't usually do them because like you said, okay. I can't prove it. Yeah. You know, I can tell you what I'm feeling. Yeah. And we've had some pretty, uh, pretty impressive stuff with that though. Well, that's kind of where she's at with it too. She, she'll tell you the same thing. So I can't prove it, but right. this is what I'm getting from the read. So I'd say, uh, you know, probability is, you know, if there's such a thing as a past life, this is one, this is one yeah. thing for you to consider. So yeah. So do you have a specific spread that you use or something that you use for a past life? Not me. That I just, I, threw a, I, I just threw a cross down. You just throw a cross down yeah, and, right. and make that apply to the past life. Right. Yeah. But, um, but, um, I, I tell you something, Linda and I had a, a past life crossing, um, reading done. Yeah. It was how our lives blended in past lives together. Yeah. And, um, 
it was pretty interesting. We had it on, we got it on tape somewhere on a little cassette player. Tape. Oh, cool. Yeah, I got it somewhere. But um, uh, it was, what it was is we were in France, I think in the 1400s or maybe later. And I was a priest in France. And Linda was a young girl in my congregation who had a crush on me when she saw me because I was the powerful priest guy, you know. And um, so she really looked up to me as uh, something. And that was this, uh, she, that was it. That was, uh, that was our connection, which really no big deal, you know. Oh, that's uh, kind of cool. That's but, it was, cool. but it was interesting. It was, it was imaginative. Yeah. You know, so yeah. So I was, it was interesting, but um, uh, yeah. But um, I will say one thing about all these cards, like it's out of deck, there are 97 cards. Yeah. We talked about the, 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 the 22 majors, just reading with the 22 majors. Mm -hmm. And then you start talking about reverse meanings and all this other stuff. I did a video on this where if you were to take just the 22 majors and then if you were to take those 22 of them, if you cut that in half and now you just got 11 cards, let's say you got the magician, number one, to uh, high priestess. No, the um, the eleventh justice. Okay, 11. one through eleven, you got in order. Okay, and that's all you got. And if you were to take those eleven cards, and if you could do a, a Celtic cross with them, with a significator, that's eleven cards. Then, yeah. The there's um, millions of different combinations of what those 11 cards could give you in those 11 positions. Millions. If you had the time, I think it's 139 million, but even if it was less than that, 11 positions, 11 cards. If you could, if you could do a reading with, with 11 cards, if you were able to shuffle 11 cards lay them into a cross and read them in two minutes then pick them up and do another reading shuffle them lay them out and do them in two minutes if you could do that and you wanted to go through all the different combinations you could do with 11 cards if you did nothing for your but in your waking life but read those two minute readings with those 11 cards it would take you 76 years to go through all of them. Wow. That's how many combinations you got with 11 cards. So now you add the whole deck, the whole 22 deck in there. That's without reverse meanings. So now you add that just that you got 22 cards. That's even who knows how many more. If you oh. got the whole deck, you don't need reverse meanings. No. You don't need, you have so many different combinations and variables with that deck. With, even with 22 major arcane. So, you know, the, the, the amount of ideas that are there and the amounts of different combinations you can use if you have that many positions out there, like 10 or 11 positions, it's, it's amazing what you could find, all the possibilities out there. You better believe in reincarnation because you're not going to have enough time to do it in one lifetime. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Come back a couple of times just to read cards. That's, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So um um Ed De Bonos, I think is his name. He's a creative consultant. Was gave me those uh got those those numbers from him. 139 million, I think, different combinations with 11 positions. Good gosh. I would have never figured it would have been that many, but yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I know. So either way, it's just a lot of ideas. And even if it was just a thousand, how many you'd need for, for yeah. finding answers in life? You know, you don't yeah. need that many. Yeah, um, a thousand or a couple of thousand seems like that would be an ample number. But when you're talking millions and millions like that, that's... Uh, 
yeah. So that's nuts. And think about it, though, for, for well, uh, I haven't been reading near as long as you have. But I mean, you know, even even in my uh, uh, my tarot career and uh, and then your stack stack that up in there. You've read you've read countless, countless thousands of times for different people. How many times have you got a, a carbon copy of a reading you did a year ago or 10 years ago? You're, you're never going to get the same reading twice. So, yeah, no. that, no, that, you never that, will. that absolutely. You never do the same reading twice, even no. though you may have a similar message it's never the same it's never right. the same yeah right yes yeah, so like uh, if that would be like saying you shuffle the cards and i do a celtic cross and the the, the card the 10 cards that came up in order are the ace of the magician through justice yeah the first 11 cards you're never going to see that happen it could happen no. Yeah, you know, it could. magician yeah. number one, high priestess number two, empress number three, emperor number four, hero for number five, lover six, seven chariot. So it, it could it could happen, but I don't know anybody who's ever seen it happen. No, no, that's one of those millions of different combinations that it could be. You know? So yeah, there's a whole lot of ideas out there. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh Vince, while I'm thinking about it. Uh, you remember what we were talking about yesterday when we spoke on the phone about a conceptual blending exercise that had something to do with your space? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Are we going to divulge that and warn people, or are we just going to uh, uh, surprise folks with that? Well, we could. Yeah, we'll do that. I'm going to take something on my. You, you want to do that? Do that today? I think it'd be a great intro to the group to do that, and then we can uh, continue that on other occasions as well. Okay, everybody pay attention. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, look at the stuff on my bookshelf here. If you see anything here that would be, you think that would be interesting to, to help find answers to a question on something. First, you'd have to have a question though first to see with that, how, how that would work. But you can see how you can just take anything. I could, we could, I could, well, I could do, I could do like this maybe even, let me see here. Me can see you zoom this. in a little bit? Maybe I could do okay. this. Got a close up. Am I am I showing it there? Okay. Yeah. We got some stuff too. there. We got. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that I got to keep talking so that I'll show up on the screen. Got incense burner, crystal. Got a um, crystal there. Um. Statue in the back, Greek statue. Captain Ahab there that I did. And uh, that Greek goddess, I don't know who she is, but a uh, plague mask in the back there. Just all sorts of stuff that you got. Got uh, crystals down here, another, another um, statue, Horus, I think that is. Is that an owl? No, that's Horus, the Egyptian. Okay. Um, I'm trying to show, see if I can get him on here. Yeah, that's the Egyptian Horus, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, you got all sorts of different things. Here we have a gargoyle covering his face. And then uh, just... Hey, Vince, who, what was the one with the... Um, it, it was a dark statue. It's got a shield. In oh yeah, that's, that's a Spartan right there. That's a Spartan. A Spartan. That's an actual, that was, they, they found that um, statue, uh, archaeology found that statue. That's fantastic. That, that's, that, not, that, that just that's, really attracted me. But yeah, that's a, that's, an, a, that's, a, that's a replica, obviously. I'll, I'll bring it up closer. And um, I always liked that statue. That's really cool. And um, these were neat because these are from a church. Oh wow! And, and um, are they candle know, holders? Yeah, votive. votive, votive candle holder, you know. But those are brass, I think. And um, so those were nice to find. And I always like those. But here I want to bring that Spartan down here. That's lead. 
and, and you could see him. Um, That's so cool. Yeah, uh, and this was an actual find. Some archaeology found this from the, in Sparta. That's a Spartan warrior. And they probably had a spear. Mm. They probably had a spear right, right um, holding a spear, spear here. Oh, yeah. Possibly even going through the shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have been, right. So Very I'm honored cool. to a piece of marble. And um... so it's interesting you notice that. You like that, huh? I do like that one very much. Yeah. I got that from Toscanos, which is a, 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 nov it's a furniture and decoration type of um, European style um, artwork and pictures and statues and things like that. And they're, they're right here in Chicago area. And uh, you can, once a year, they, they, they're, all their work is for stores and they don't sell to the public. But once a year, if you're a business, you could be invited to come there and they have uh, stuff that's just, they, they discontinued or maybe the box is broken or whatever. So they just have a whole warehouse of stuff like that. Well, like they say, one one person's junk is another person's treasure. Oh yeah. So, so yeah. you go you go there with a shopping cart, not like you got in a grocery store. You got one of those <laughs> ones with the floor on them. You know the big ones of the big cart thing. Right. And you're putting boxes <laughs> in there. Yeah, and and that's what you, people do. And it was just it's a great place to go. I don't know if we got the scream there. We might have got the scream at that place. I'm not too sure. I forgot where we got him. And that's all that's always been a cool piece on, on yeah your I like oh it. yeah I, I always goes there too i love that screen statue <laughs> well you well you could take anything like that well maybe what i'll do um mike is i'll try to make a better thing where we could take stuff in the room here and uh, make it so what people take use it for a question you know i always like this here this is this is um that's a leaded that's an ancient an antique leaded lead, lead, uh, lampshade. Tiffany. Definitely Tiffany yeah. style, yeah. It's, it's not yeah. a Tiffany, but it's but it's a lampshade, yeah. Tiffany style. And, yeah, um, that might be something to do for the um, for the meetup. Everybody bring some cool little Chotsky that they've got on their bookshelves or whatever. Well, yeah, you, if you can yeah, if you can take it with you, do it. I got something at home I'll bring that um, I, at the apartment I'm and it's an it's an urn, it's a it's a vase. Or it's, a, it's an actual picture. It's only about that big, and it's made out of iron or something. And my uh, um, a stepfather that I had for a while, he dug out. He he built his own house around here in Chicago. You no, know, right after the war, World War II, and um, digging the foundation, he found that in the dirt. Oh wow. It's probably like from the 18, 1800s. And um, it's um, it's stamped on the bottom, the name of it. So I think it's an Italian foundry. But I got it now. But um, so Very stuff cool. like that is just interesting stuff. You know. But uh, yeah, you could you can you could take anything and use it toward a question. I use an example. I've done this YouTube before, but I'll say it again. But I have a YouTube on it. Conceptual blending and give, give examples of how it was used. In the 60s, I think it's the Pentagon was looking to, to develop an a air to air missile. So you got a fighter jet that's going 900 miles an hour and it wants to fire a missile at another fi fighter jet going 900 miles an hour. So part of the question is that what kind of detonation? Uh, well, how big is this thing going to be? Um, how many could a plane carry? And um, and things like this. And and one of the big questions was how are we going to aim this thing to hit a target? Nine hundred mile an hour jets flying around, you can't aim something like that. And you didn't have lasers. Right, they didn't have lasers. <laughs> so the, they had a creative consultant in that team in that think tank and he said think of things you find in the desert that will help us aim this missile 
that's creative. That's conceptual blending. Where you find it does, you got cactus, you got sun, you got sand, oasis, camels, rattlesnakes, scorpions, things like this. And they looked at each one of these things. And any, does any of this have attributes that would help us aim a missile? And the rattlesnake, the sidewinder rattlesnake hides in the sand and it senses body heat as it walks by it. And when it senses that body heat, it springs out of the sand and, and attacks and bites the, 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 the body, whatever it is. That's amazing. It's called the sidewinder. And so it's, it strikes body temperature. It spikes body heat. And they said, well, what about a missile that could a heat seeking heat missile? Seeking, right. That's, that's awesome. where they came up with the heat seeking missile. And that's why they called it the Sidewinder. The first heat seeking missile was called the Sidewinder. Well, thank you, Vince, for the military that's history lesson. That's and awesome. that's why, and that's why they got that's how they got the name by right? some creative consultants say, okay, how are we going to aim this missile? Think of things you're finding in the desert. Now, when you look at that logically, what are you talking about? Things are going to find in a missile going to help us aim a missile. No, but you got to look at it conceptual blending as a creative thinking technique. You found an answer. That's conceptual blending. That's a great story. Yeah. It is. An another one with the government was um, the Hubble telescope. You know, how big they're going to make it um, um, and all these other things. Uh, those are things or categories that they had to look into. A saddle, you know, how they're going to control it and all that. The big thing with the Hubble telescope was how they're going to focus the telescope to look light years away. Telescopes focus by extending or retracting its range. So you want to look light years away, you'd have to be able to extend this telescope in ways that you can't even design it. It'd be too long. Or you can't do it. And they couldn't figure out how they're going to focus this telescope. And they almost trashed the whole idea. It was almost a failure. And one of the people in that think tank was at his hotel room thinking about this focus thing. And he decided to take a shower. And he went to the, to the shower and he's adjust, and this, this sh the hotel had a shower head that you could adjust the flow of water to a widespread or direct stream, you know, open and closed. And he's playing around with the shower head thinking about focusing a telescope. And he thought, well, what if you took a telescope? What if we made the telescope where it, it, it um, light flew, flowed through it, just like water is from the shower head. And instead of focusing by extending and retracting, it opens and closes this way. And so they, they took the shower head to the think tank the next day. And he said, can we use the mechanics of this to focus a telescope? And they did it. The Hubble telescope was a success because of the shower head. They focused it by looking at a shower head, figure out how to focus the Hubble telescope. That's conceptual blending. Think of things you find in the bathroom, shower head, help us focus the telescope to look light years away. Heat seeking missile or missile, high speed missile. Think of things you're finding in the desert. That's the power of conceptual blending. Becoming a professional tarot reader. What's in Vincent's <laughs> office? <laughs> That's right. You know, well, you, yeah. you, well, you know, you can, you can actually take that. And now that I just said that, trying to be funny. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate you laughing at my joke. I do. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. But, but, you know, if you think about it, that statue, Okay, we want to become a professional tarot reader. Okay, fine and dandy. That's the goal to be, to uh, read pro. That's okay. great. Okay, then we look at the, then we look on the shelf and we see this this Trojan warrior here yeah. with shield out and the whole bit. And we're looking, we're we're poking around and doggone it, you know, those warriors they never gave up. They were no. tenacious about what they were doing. They yeah. never. Uh, they they learned all the basics they laid the groundwork and then they move forward collectively like here we are in a group so networking and then all of a sudden they were professional soldiers and that's that's what the trojans were you know that's what those folks were back then 
So, so is, boom, yeah, they're right. All of a sudden, right. And the and the and this is Spartans, the Spartans. Yeah, the Spartans. Yeah, and not the, from the, the Spartans, right. Yeah. The Spartans. Well, the three hundred, the movie, the three hundred. Yeah, exactly, King uh, Leonidas. A great guy movie, you know. Oh, y'all you know. love that movie. Uh, yeah, love right. And uh, but, but yeah, that's what this is. It's a spark, and they they created the phalanx, the phalanx. Yeah. I think they call. Them. Yeah, and they had to work together with the shield. Yeah, they had to work together, and that's actually the Greeks were the first civilization to get up close in warfare. Before before them, they used to just throw their spears at each other from a distance. Yeah, and the Greeks were the first one to get in close. And they got here, you know, and they just, they would just march in the air and look you right in the face. And, yeah. But they held together. Uh, the, the defense was they had the they had the um, the arm the the shin guards. Yeah. They had the the helmet up here. Yeah. And they had the shield, and that's all they needed because the shield was um, and the and the head and those shin guards. Okay. Everything else was covered. Then everything's covered. Absolutely. So, that, and, not only, not only great teamwork, but yeah. uh, you know, get, uh, having the courage to participate in the event. And you know, Vince, I've heard you say it, and I know uh, I've said it a uh, hundred times. If I've said it once, the biggest key for me uh, when when I made the step forward to uh, to go pro and start reading for other people, people I'd never met before, is simply to step up, look them in the eye, sit down with confidence, and start throwing them cards and do it, and to believe in myself. And if you think about it, you can take a lot of that from the Spartans. So there we go again. Sure. The blending. There's my take right there. That's right. That's how we get from that silly statue to a professional tarot reader right there. Have the courage to start. One, one thing with the Spartans is that they were specialized in one thing, war. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't blacksmiths, they weren't leather makers, or they weren't pottery makers. They specialized in warfare. The Athenians yeah. and, the, and, the, and the Trojans and all that, they did other things. Yeah. But the Spartans specialized in one thing. And what else you could say about the Spartans is... Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to think. Of, but looking at different attributes of the Greeks, yeah, or the Spartans, or you could take the statue and just say archaeology. You don't even have to be the Greeks. It could be any type of archaeology. How, how could anything from the past help us? What any any archaeological find? Look at the pyramids, the Sphinx. It's a. This is an archaeological find. This thing. You could break that down too to the to the actual shapes, the artwork of the statue itself, and the mm -hmm. craftsmanship that was taken there, and it and segue to the craftsman that made it, and what was needed, and what was necessary to create the original of that statue. I think you yep. can take this down right. into just a web of ridiculous. Right. Dip. So if you look at that, you could say, okay. Old craftsmanship. How, what kind of old craftsmanship would help us with this question? You could say that, right? Just by looking at some old craftsmanship here. Absolutely. You know, you could look at it. What kind of specialization? If you specialize in something, one thing only. Um, how does that help us with with this question? Being a specialist. Mm -hmm. um, Guys, I'm going to have to go. Oh, okay, Mary. I'll see you next time. All right, we'll see you on the twenty eighth. Yeah, if you come yeah, back. on the twentieth. Yeah, it's it's way past midnight, so I'm oh, stunned. Right. Oh. Okay, good to see you, Mary. Okay, Bye -bye. see you. Bye, Bye, Mary. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye for now. Dream Thanks, wonderful Lose. stuff. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Bye. Um, yeah. An here's another example of of uh, perceptual blending that was something that was discovered. A lot of these I've talked about on YouTube or other places, so some of you might have already heard it. But um, Lewis Braille, blind. Yeah. Okay, Lewis Braille, blind. Mm -hmm. And um, as a boy, the he blind. was sitting under the tree in his backyard, wishing he could read a book again. His father's out there working in the yard, and he's just sitting under a tree, and he reaches around, and he feels, uh, and he feels a a pine cone 
and he's holding this pine cone in his hand and thinking about, I wish I could read a book. And he felt the points on that pine cone. And he thought, well, okay, what if we put points on paper in certain patterns to make letters that you could touch the letter? And that's I where have they a pine cone. With. That's where they paint. Oh, there you go, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Anna? Yeah. So you can look at that question and say, well, how can a pine cone help the blind read books? It doesn't make any sense. But Lewis Braille made an idea and said, okay, the attributes of this pine cone is little points on them, little, little highlights, and you could touch them. Just like you could touch, if you put a patterns on paper that way, where they points, you could touch them for the letter A, for the letter B, and so on, you could read Braille. And, and so that's how Lewis Braille came up with Braille. The classic one is uh, Newton sitting under the tree, trying to figure out what gravity is and an apple falls on his head. I was thinking about it. Okay, when, yeah, uh, it's, it's I was thinking thing. about that. Yeah, okay, when, right. When you when you when you're talking about the missiles and everything, I was like, oh, the apple, Newton, yeah. the apple, of course. Right. So I mean, somebody. I mean, I don't know if that really happened with him. Yeah. But, but the thing is, you can see where people think that way. You know, we we think we we blend things together. We take things and we we use we use them as symbols for other ideas yeah. and and, and, and the, the, the um, and the crown the eureka thing the the eureka thing uh, i i don't remember but uh, someone that discovered how to how to wait things when he entered uh, the tub with the water and he discovered that that way he could uh, find the weight of something oh, I, I can't remember and then okay. he, he shouted eureka and oh, I, okay. I can't remember. I can't remember the name, um, but that 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 is how uh, he discovered uh, how to weight something by the volume. Okay. Discovering the volume of something. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah, there's all sorts of them out there, and um, and so and the, and the way to find otherwise you're looking in your learned knowledge, and if you're stuck for an idea, you're not going to find anything there because. That's why you're stuck. Everything you've learned, I don't have an answer for. I don't have an answer for this with everything I've learned. So now I got to try to find some other ideas. And the way you force yourself to look at other ideas is to just grab some randomness and say, what does this have that would help me with this question? And it forces you to use your imagination and you look at it in ways you never saw it before. Finding new ideas. And if this doesn't help me, I'll look at this. You know, I'll look at this, or I'll look at this. Maybe this over here will help me. You know, so I'll find something. I just keep on looking at stuff, and um, and the tarot cards are a perfect tool for that. Perfect tool. <laughs> now, now we've turned. Uh, now we've turned Anna, the newest addition to our group, into a conceptual blender. <laughs> Yeah. No, but, but you know, I, I come from, I have a, a theater a degree, oh. so uh, conceptual blending was actually something that I already did um, in oh. a certain, in a such a way when writing theater or searching for characters, doing uh, some theater work. And, and the creative process is there. I, I, I work in the creative field for, for a long time. So well, there you that is something, there. yeah. You see, that's that, something like tarot could come very easy to you because yeah. you already know how to think creatively. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, um, um, that's a big, big plus. That's such a value yeah. to be able to think creatively. <laughs> and it doesn't yeah. take a lot. You don't have to learn anything except for how to do it. I feel there are a great many professions that absolutely already do this. Like I, I spent 33 years as a high school teacher and okay. to create meaningful lessons, uh, especially yeah. on most mundane topics requires imagination. It requires creativity and thinking outside the box. And it also requires the ability to take the information that was previously taught, tie it, link it and tangentially grow it. In, in that way. So I, I just feel like there's a lot of, of professions that 
use this innately. The, the, at least the good ones do. The, the, yeah. <laughs> the good ones do. Right. Um, and it was just never quite given a name. I know businesses, certainly um, governments and large corporations took this over as team planning how to better their sales or better their um, wh whatever it is their speciality is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But well, um, it, well, I think I that that surprises some people to tie it to tarot because so many people that I know think of tarot as some magical thing as, would, as opposed to I, I, a creative uh, a living kind of you're, you're better off you're better off tying the tarot to creative thinking right then people accept exactly. it more if you try to tie creative thinking to a tarot you go the other way around you go the other right. way I agree. It's, it's, a, it's a creative thing. It, 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 it creative conceptual blending became an official term in psychology in 93. That's how new it is. Right. Now you can take classes on it. Advertising agencies use it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to have hiring companies, companies that are, yeah. are specifically hiring for certain professions. They absolutely use it. And so do any fortune 500 company. Use it. Mm -hmm. You got, uh, a company says, well, I want to want to take our product or our service and make it better than our competitor. We got to find some innovative way to do that. Something nobody's thought about. And and uh, Federal Express one overnight delivery, overnight delivery, Federal Express. He went to the post office with that. Right. And they said it'll never work. Then he went to UPS with it. They said it would never work either. And uh, his own business teacher in college, uh, he wrote a he wrote a thesis on it, overnight delivery, and that teacher I think uh, gave him a D on it or something, because he said that the um, the I, nobody's going to care if they get it overnight. They're just not going to want to bother with that. Wow. And that, that that, but he stayed with his idea. But it was a good idea. But he stayed with it. And now, and, and um, his thesis, I forgot his name. I think it's Fred something. His thesis is written, written on the wall in bronze or something around his whole office. The whole thesis. Yeah. Because everybody said, no, that would never fly. Nobody's going to want it overnight. But he came up with an idea that nobody else had. And uh, look, you know, this is what Federal Express is. And um, so uh, people do come up with new ideas. Lots of times they look at it and say, well, because experts will look at it and say, no, that won't work. So then they think, oh, okay. And they, they don't go with it. So somebody who had a new idea and no matter what the experts say, goes with it anyway, you might really have something big there. And uh, like I said, advertising agencies go with it. Um, I know for a fact, Marlboro cigarettes, Marlboro, Philip Morris came to Leo Burnett, advertise, one of the biggest advertisers in the world. They're out of shot of Chicago. And um, Leo Burnett was, uh, they smoked, uh, Marlboro cigarettes were filtered cigarettes and only women smoked filtered cigarettes. Men thought it was like, it was, the image of it was too, like a sissy cigarette for a guy. And Leo, for, Philip Morris wanted men to start smoking Marlboro. So Leo Burnett came up with the Marlboro man. The cowboy out there on his horse. <laughs> and Marlboro became one of the biggest um, cigarettes to buy in, the, in, in, the, in history. Leo Burnett came up with uh, <coughs> Morris the Cat. The finicky cat. Does anybody remember Morris the finicky cat? Oh yeah, yeah. That was Leo Burnett. Um, just an idea that nobody else would. You know, you want a finicky cat? You know, that's an idea. Uh, so he he had a box on the table, where if he had an idea, a, a, just anything, a keyword, he would take it, write it on, read, write it on the on a piece of paper, and throw it in the box. And then when he was looking for ideas about something. He would randomly grab a, one of those ideas out of his box and see it and conceptually blend that idea to what he's looking into. The Jolly Green Giant, um, 
uh, produce uh, packaging, uh, Jolly Green Giant vegetables. You know, he was um, he he bittered on doing their campaigning, their marketing. They were a packing company in Minnesota, I think, in a valley somewhere, and uh, and the guy Leo Burnett was a short little dumpy guy, and he never dressed. Uh, that he was always he was he was sort of like sloppy guy, dirty sport jacket, you know, and uh, wrinkled. And um, the the owner of the of the packing company was a real tall guy. And so Leo Burnett was one of the advertising agencies, gave his bid on what he could do for the company. And um, the owner told his secretary, he says, out of the people I saw, I like that short little dumpy guy, call him. And that was Leo Burnett. And he found out that the, the owner called him the short little dumpy guy. And so he made the green giant from the valley, because this was a valley somewhere, because he was a real tall guy. And uh, you know, he came up with the idea of that. The comment on him being the short little guy, he reversed it and say, well, he's real tall. I'm gonna, let's call this the Green Giant. And that's how he came up with Green Giant. These are great the, stories, Vince. Where do, you, where do you find these? Just collect them <laughs> over the years? Well, a lot of them, but I also was in printing and I was a sales rep, so I knew Leo Burnett company. I didn't know Leo Burnett, but I, I tried to get, we, we did work for Leo Burnett. Matter of fact, when he, that's another thing, when he first opened up, I don't know when the 1930s or whatever it was, he, he had a, a press release come to his uh, office. And like I said, he was a real sloppy looking guy. He's wrinkled up sport jacket. He didn't, he didn't look presentable. And this reporter did an interview with him. And then, so the next day he wants to see his press release about his Leo Burnett advertising company. And he gets the paper and the guy put on there Leo Burnett, Leo Burnett would have better luck selling apples on the street than being an advertising agency. So, I mean, Leo Burnett's like, you know, he's just like, oh, geez. And to this day, you go to Leo Burnett downtown Chicago, every floor of that building has fresh apples put, uh, brought in. <laughs> Big baskets of fresh apples on every uh, you walk in there for any reason. You go drop a letter off to somebody. You can grab an apple on the way out. Every floor has fresh apples brought in every day. Every floor of that building. Because I love it. These are he should have sold, he should have sold right. apples. So yeah, there's some interesting stories with it. But what well, you look at, but knowing advertising agencies did help me really help me see. Um, how that works with other people besides tarot readers, because I did know a lot of advertising agencies and those people are just starving for ideas, just starving for new ideas. And um, I was walking once with Leo Burnett and um, I didn't have an account with them, but I was in their, in their building. And one of, the, one of their artists there was making an ad for Craftsman Tools for Sears. And he took, you know how Craftsman Tools, they got those wrenches, they got wrenches, Krenzer wrenches. Mm -hmm. yeah. He made a skeleton on the on a black velvet piece of cloth of a skeleton of of a of a human out of wrenches, different size wrenches, sockets for toe joints, and all this. Wow. And those whole skeleton with wrenches. I could I could look at it. And say, oh my God, is that cool? You know. <laughs> but I don't know if they ever used it. But um, you know, they showed it to him. I'm sure. Sears probably said, no, nah, we don't like it. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> who knows? I don't know. But, but I, I thought, you know, they come up with these ideas and that's what they do, you know. And so it, 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 it does have value. And, um, and um, so it's used all over the world, is basically what I'm saying. And, and conceptual blending is the most, most popular application of thinking creative thinking that there is and um and it's a, it's identical to a card game. so and it's the way the mind naturally works anyway 
Somebody picked up a stick a million years ago and said, I could use this as a spear. That's conceptual brain. Or a rock. I made, I made tools out of rocks. You know? And uh, that's what it is. So it's the human mind can do that. Actually, so any primate can do it. Because they did a study with chimpanzees eating termites. And the chimpanzees would take, they sit by a termite hill and they take a reed. So there was reeds going around it. And they put it in their mouth like this. And they stick it in the hole and the, the spit would stick the termites to it and they would lick them off. So they knew how to do that. You know, They kept on doing this and then putting in more and they would eat these termites. So even, even primates, uh, chimpanzees use it. So you could get a chimpanzee to read tarot cards. <laughs> <laughs> like an organ grinder. I'd be like an organ grinder, you know, a little monkey that would be reading tarot cards. <laughs> That can be a title for your next book, uh, Tarot <laughs> Monkey can do it. Tarot Monkey. <laughs> Tarot Monkey. That's, that's, but that's a good story, and that, that's really a testament to, to you know, to the uh, the uh, human mind and, and to primates in general. I mean, how, uh, how intelligent even our next cousins are, you know, with the chimpanzees and whatnot. Yeah, and yeah. It really... Again, and I know I've said this to you a bunch of times, but, uh, you know, it really speaks to taking the woo-woo out of tarot and uh, putting the application of science and psychology in here. And there's there's actually a really, really good reason why the tarot works. And it has nothing to do with the cardboard. It has everything to do with the reader. And the magic is within each one of us, the reader. I know. I, I th I'm actually thinking about taking a creative thinking course in college just to just to take it not to not i mean i'm not don't want to go to college but just to take it to see how i could use it for a, a book or or how i could tie it in with tarot well, yeah. be interesting to take just to see how they presented the information to people who have no idea about what creative thinking is there are a lot of people who are extremely linear right, and they yeah. they don't think naturally for themselves that way they've been trained that way from a child to go left to right top to bottom and right uh, and in life and so to it would probably be very instructive to take that class just to see how they break it down yeah uh, to uh, not not just to help with our own readings, but to debunk some of the ooky spooky. Yeah, stuff right. And just literally teach what you're teaching is critical thinking, blending with intuition. Right. And watch the lights go on. I, I think it, it also will can certainly for some people validate the yeah. how why tarot works and how it is. It's not yeah. just, so, you right. know, ooh, somebody told you something about me. And you knew it that way. I also think what you just said is real important too. Critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Critical thinking, if I know right, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, is okay, facts, data, things like that, mm -hmm. I would imagine. And so you got you got and you gotta have that too. Because you gotta have something to be intuitive about. Exactly. So you gotta structure a, a question in some way, then you can go into creative thinking. And uh, around your critical thinking, so I think it's um, I think it's it's useful to know the thought process of, of both of those. Right. Well, critical teaching once again as a high school teacher, teaching critical thinking is literally breaking down all of the ways something is attached to something else. Well, for example, you know, this is here. Friend is into Legos. Should build this. So you might show something like this to someone. And say, all right. Well, how might someone have come up with the plan to create this. And then you would have all the different links. Well, you would need a manufacturer to create the bricks. You would need uh, bricks of uniform sizes and shapes so that grids could be made. And then, all right, well, what are grids good for? They're good for collecting data and charting. You can, you can just kind of see the attachment one way or the other. All of that really is critical thinking. And so conceptual blending seems to me almost very close to synonymous with, with 
critical well, thinking. There, that's that's cool. And you know what else is critical thinking? The card spread itself. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Each, without each. without the card spread, it, 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 certainly you can do lots of different multiples of three card readings and blended blended cards but the spreads offer the infinite creativity for a reader to be able to create their own or to take the facts of some, what somebody presents with some question and say okay well let's take a look at what what might go into that question uh, well, let's yeah, have a card for the people that, it, that that you're dealing with and then it, let's have a card for the vocation in which you are experiencing this or that whatever it is that the aspects it breaks wow. the question apart. It's right. like you broke that Lego thing mm -hmm. apart. Exactly. And it breaks the question apart. And it puts them uh, right the aspects that are important to look into. Exactly. That's critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And and uh, um, what like you say, what critical thing? What's you know connecting all all the things connected to it? I think is how you put it. Exactly. And so okay, yeah. What are all the things connected to this question? And what could improve it? What what might destroy it? What so you can take it in whatever direction? Well, then yeah. Well, the new work. ideas are the are the are the creative thinking. Right. That's the creative thinking, and, and you get new ideas with the randomness of conceptual blending. People, I gotta run. This has been this has wonderful. Been great. Thank you, Vince, for being yeah. able to go to Zoom with well, us. On, yeah, on, and, and my computer yeah. yeah. didn't work. I, I probably got something I got to set on my computer over here, Mike, for the Zoom. You and I will work that out. We'll, we'll yeah. work it out. We'll, yeah, we'll we'll create a think on how we're going to get you a little bit more into the Facebook page. Uh, okay. Uh, Del, I want to thank you. I know everybody else here wants to thank you for giving up yeah. party Saturday. Uh, to come in and spend time with us. We do appreciate that, no doubt about it. So thank you, Vince Patici, oh, for yeah. my spending uh, part of your Saturday. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. This was a and lot of fun. Thank you to the members of the Conceptual thank you. Group for being so yeah. so yeah. darned understanding and then coming over here and joining us and sticking it out with us. Because as you can see, anytime we can get Vince in a group like this, we're going to learn something. We are going to learn something. Yeah. And this is what it's hey. all about why we're here mike so. mike thank you and you know thank you for sorting the live out and uh, and being so you know so yeah. enduring with that as well and uh, and vincent you know thank you for then you know when it wouldn't work there then letting us do the zoom yeah we really appreciate that yeah this, this well, is absolutely great was vince fun. i recorded this are you going to put this on youtube or yeah i'll put it on youtube Okay, and then and then I'll go ahead and share the link back to the group. Say this is what you missed if you didn't follow us to Zoom. Okay. And... <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Thank you, Mike, for all your hard work putting it all together yeah. and persevering and yeah. sticking to it. Yes. Just yeah. constantly being so up about it all. So you yeah. know. Everybody, you take care, and we'll talk thank on the twenty eighth. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bye. Okay. Good thank on. you. Bye. Bye. Bye for now.